privilege to come and to share with you virtually as we have come together to worship our Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. Thank God that over the years of our salvation that we have grown familiar with those familiar ways of the Lord. You can know the Bible, you can read it. More importantly, to understand the Bible, you have to have a relationship with God. That relationship is under salvation. Yes, sir. And to understand God more fully is to know the ways of the Lord. We thank God that we're able to come and worship together this morning because we as his people walking with him in newness of life and being a witness of his grace, we have come to know his way. We thank God that he has taught us that is is better for his children that we assemble together to worship as one body in Christ, so it's good to be here. We're located at 4821 Barbie Road here in the city of Durham, North Carolina. We are 80 plus years old. We thank God that he has allowed us to be here on this hill as a beacon light to some wayward traveler through this life who needs to know Jesus as their savior. Knowing that he came and shed his blood and died and was buried and rose again from the dead, that we will not have to worry about, as we say, that last day of our life. Eternity is available to you, and we offer Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. So we thank God that we are able to share today and worship and we Thank you for your prayers and your financial support, praying for the ministry of this church, and not only praying for this church, but praying for those who are less fortunate than we are. Our brothers and sisters, as we list in our worship bulletin each Sunday, those in our community, we ask that you would ask the Lord to strengthen this congregation witness and its work, service, and ministry will be a light to someone who needs to see Christ in us. Pray for our nation. Pray for the world that God has created. We ask that you would, as a fellowship, members of this church, Share the love of Christ, who first loved us, that we loved one another as he has commanded. Let us pray. Father, we do thank thee for this early morning moment of fellowship. Thank you for those who have come to make possible this service, for those who view Touch, O Heavenly Father, according to your will, someone may find thee 
Thank you for life everlasting, for being made a new creature. We know you did it because we have been convicted and you have revealed yourself to us. We thank you that we are witnesses of thy grace and that we have a joy that the world did not give nor can take away. Bless now these moments of worship and adoration of thy name and of thyself. In Jesus' name.
We thank God for such songs of Zion that give us encouragement, guidance along the way. From the book of Numbers, chapter 32, beginning with verse 20. And Moses said unto them, If ye will do this thing, mm -hmm. if ye will go armed before the Lord to war, and will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he hath driven out his enemies from before him, and the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward ye shall return and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel. And this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if ye will not do so, mm. behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Mm -hmm. There are some things I may not know There are some places I can go But I am sure One thing that God is real, and I can feel Him in my soul. Oh, yes, God is real, real in my soul. Yes, God is real. Oh, oh, oh. 
to the storehouse. Due to the COVID-19, Community Baptist Church will be open to receive your offerings each Tuesday from 12 o'clock p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You may also send your tithes and or offerings by mail. Please mail to Community Baptist Church, 4821 Barbie Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27713. You may also give your tithes and offerings online. Please visit our website at cbcdurham.net backslash. Let the church say amen. Amen. We thank God for these moments in fellowship, and we thank God for you again. Our virtual viewers for sharing with us in this time of worship and fellowship. But if ye will not do this thing, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. This statement that Moses made to Israel did not include all of Israel. It specifically was the address to three of the tribes, three tribe, two and a half tribe. The half tribe of Manasseh is not mentioned in this chapter 32, but Reuben and Gad were cattle barons. If you read the blessings that Israel bestowed upon his 12 sons before they, after they had entered into Egypt, each son had a uniqueness about himself. There are some subsequent information in the Bible where tribes like Naphtali and tribes like Issachar had special uniquenesses, and each tribe had a uniqueness. The half tribe of Manasseh, Reuben and Gad, they were they were cattle barons. They were the tribes that had lots of cattle, more cattle than any of the other tribes. So when they journeyed towards the Promised Land, as they got near to the eastern part of the Jordan. They ran across these nine cities that are listed in this chapter. And these cities had great plains of grass area that was suitable for their uniqueness as cattle barons. So they wanted to stay on this side of the Jordan, Gad, Reuben, and the half trap of Manasseh. They did not want to go over into the promised land that God had promised 12 tribes of Israel. Then they wanted to stay, and so they asked Moses if they could take this portion of the land to be their portion. And Moses said, you're trying to pull the same trick that your forefathers did. Mm. And he shared with them in chapter 32 that when he sent the tribes from Kadesh Barnea up to Ascro, they, they saw the land, but they brought back a bad report, a mm -hmm. disappointing mm -hmm. report, an evil report, the Bible mm -hmm. says. Mm -hmm. And it frightened the people, and they were afraid, and it angered God, mm -hmm. even though it frightened the people. And God said, because you have brought an evil report and not a faith report, I'm going to have you march around this wilderness for 40 years. And all of that crowd, according to the record, as you have read and known and understood, they died. 
So Moses reminded them, you're trying to pull the same trick. Shall the brothers of your family go over into the promised land and having to war and fight to take the land, should they do that while you sit in comfort, in convenience? You see in chapter 32, as in other chapters, how the 12 tribes of Israel took the promise that God had given to this family, and because of convenience and because of the uniqueness of each tribe, they used it for their own personal gain and benefit. Not following faithfully what God's design was, but they changed God's design to suit and fit the uniqueness and prosperity of their own families because they were cattle barons. And the land was fertile with grass, covered with verdure, good for their cattle, good for their calves good for their family. So they said to Moses, we will build sheepfolds and cities for our family. And we will go over with our brothers and we will stay with them until they not only conquer the land, but are settled in the land. Until they have their homes and they have their villages and they have their hamlets and they are, they are, they are planted and foundational and, 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 and secure in the land. We will not leave them at the door. We will do our part and then we will go back to our homes. Moses said, what a grand idea. Moses said, if you go armed, every one of you, over into the promised land and do as you have said to your brothers and your kindred and stay there until they are secure and settled in the land, then you will be released from your obligation. But if you don't, then your sin will be against the Lord. And be sure and know that your sin will find you out. Now, the term sin in this regard doesn't have anything to do with the breaking of the law. Sin in this regard doesn't have anything to do with the transgression against the commandments of God. This sin has to do with Moses' legions. If you don't do what you say you will do, if you fail in your commitment, in your promise, in your oath, be sure your sin will find you out your sin will turn into the FBI. Your sin will turn into the avenging angel. Your sin will turn into your own detriment. It wasn't that their sin was a transgression against the law. Sin here meant that Moses will take action on you. And you will not be able to exist because if you don't protect the security and the existence of your brother, then you will have no future as well. Your sin will find you out. How can we make application of that today? Moses says that if ye do not do what you said you will do, be sure that your sin will find you out. You know, we think God is going to get us. We think that if we do something wrong, that God somehow is going to himself exact punishment on us. 
That's not what the Bible really teaches. The Bible really teaches that our own choices bring about its own consequence. You know why you get cirrhosis of the liver? Because you drink too much. You know why lung cancer hits you? Because you smoke too much. It is not God that bothers us when we do something wrong. Our own choices. Our own decisions to delve in things that we know are not good for us. Our, our, our own promises that we break ourselves. Our own oaths. Our own vows that we somehow forget, neglect, or leave, or quit, or stop. The things that we know protect us, that we absent from our life and remove from our existence. The things that protect and keep and hold and help us to grow. Our choices. Bring about our own consequences. It is not God. It is not the devil made me do it. We made it ourselves to do it. We decided ourselves. We chose ourselves. We determined ourselves. We just went about it ourselves. Nobody bothered us but ourselves. Here we have a sentence in a book that's dated in B.C. time. Two millenniums removed from our own existence. And here a man tells a group that's a part of a kindred of 12. Be sure and know you sin against God and your brothers, but be sure and know it is not God that will bother you. It is not your brothers. Be sure and know your sin, your sin, will find you out. Sin has a searching nature about it. Sheds its own light upon our actions and our being. There's a song that um, they sing around here, Brother Terrell, in the quartet, quartet circles around here in Durham County. If I miss heaven when I die, ain't nobody's fault but mine. I think we'll sing that song every morning, Brother, brother, brother Minister Music. I think that ought to be a theme song at least once a quarter. If I miss heaven, when I die, ain't nobody's fault, ain't nobody's fault. but mine. How, how, how we decide to do things that we know are unbecoming of our nature as children of the Most High God, and we blame everybody else but us. Be sure and know your sin will find you out. Oh, how personal it is. It belongs only to you. It is yours all by yourself. One, one, one of the things that um, we find going on in this political arena that we're in at the present time is, um, is, is, is the fact that we can't even talk to each other during this election anymore. Can, 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 can't nobody tell me nothing about my right to vote and who I want to vote for. Nobody can give me no advice. Nobody is listening to nobody. Candidates are getting away with saying anything they want to say. This is a consequential moment in the life of this nation, I mean, all bars are off 
You can say anything, do anything, act any kind of way, behave any kind of way, and nobody is paying any attention to it. It is like, it is like dignity and integrity and character is gone. We're even joying and clapping for the, for the harm and violence and, and killing of one another in America. So-called greatest nation the world has ever known. Well, America, I got just one thing to say, and it's said by a man who lived a long time ago. Be sure and know that your sin will find you out. It has a searching nature to it. And brothers and sisters, the only thing that you can protect right now is your character and the choice that you make. The decision that you make will affect your character later if you vote for this one or if you vote for that one. Your character will tell you later on that you're not that much of a person. It's based upon the choice that you make. An apostle helps us out a little while later. He's a little closer to our time. As a matter of fact, he's in A.D., but he's in the first century, somewhere over there in the Letter to the Galatians, chapter 6, I do believe. He's talking about those who teach, those who communicate the gospel with you, those who share, those who preach, those who, who instruct you in the gospel, who tries to open your mind and heart and give you as much of God's word as they can. Be good to them. Share your, your wealth and possessions with them. Do, do, do what you can. you can. You can be generous to them because they are sharing the gospel. They are helping you with your eternal destiny. And then he makes this statement. Because whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. Says that in the context of you being generous or stingy to someone who is trying to guide you into God's word and they do it correctly. So sparingly, reap sparingly. So abundantly, reap abundantly. How do we keep our sins from finding us out? Well, there's some blood somewhere. It's from a fountain. How, how, how can I get my sin not to bother me anymore? How can I get my sin not to search my ways anymore? There's some blood somewhere. All right. There's a fountain filled with it. Drawn from a, a vein of a God who came to be with us. Sinners like you and me can plunge beneath that flood. Mm. Lose all their guilty stain. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's how you rid yourself of your sin searching for you. Looking for you and finding you. There is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stain. His name is Jesus. Son of God, his name, Jesus, the Emmanuel who came to dwell with us. He left a, a fountain of blood for you. Dip yourself in it. Your 
sins won't follow you anymore. Why don't you try? He's been available since he got up from the grave. Why don't you try? Been available since he uh, walked around after his resurrection morn and reminded his disciples that they shall be witnesses of him. He's been available since. Yes, sir. Went on back home to his father. Sits down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's been available. Since he got up from the dead. Anybody like that this morning? Been available. Why don't you try it? He still saves. He still turns off the searchlights of iniquity. Uh -huh. He'll put the fire out. that keeps following you around here. Put you on a right path. He'll pull you from darkness and set you in the light. He's still available. Why don't you come try it? The doors of the church are open. Somebody out there this morning. You know who you are. And God does too. And it's between you and the Lord. We're just here as examples of his goodness. Who had no goodness. We're your brother and sister waiting for you to become brother and sister mm -hmm. doors of the church are open right where you are because he saves to the uttermost that means anywhere won't you come to him this morning won't you come to him He won't turn you away. He won't dish you. He's not like a man who lies. He'll always be true and faithful. He knows how to, he knows how to clean you up. He, he knows how to put you right. You don't have to fix up anything. Just bring it all to him. Bring it on. Just like you are. To the because when he makes you better, you will be better. And he's the only one that can do it. He gives everlasting life. He gives power over death. I am the tall. He shall raise those who are dead from the dead. Those of us who remain, he shall gather his, his own unto himself. We'll meet him. And we'll be with him. Don't you want to be a part of it? And feeds with him with all the God the Father, God the Holy Ghost, rest and abide. Oh God, I come. Amen. Oh.